What's going on, everyone? So Boyan Bogdanovich to the Lakers would be awesome news, right? And we know that the Lakers went and made an offer for Boyan. They offered a protected first-round pick, Patrick Beverly, Kendrick Nunn, but they wanted an unprotected first, and reports have came out that they actually want more than that, that they want a first-round pick as well as other draft compensation or a young player uh, that they think has some upside. Right? Makes sense. They're a young, rebuilding team. It's just a lot for Boyan Bogdanovich. It's hard enough to, to give up one first-round pick considering his age and just the, the type of player he is. Yes, he's having a great season. He's been a dead-eye shooter. Uh, he's he's 50-40-90, just the works. And I do think he would be one of the best fits next to LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and Russell Westbrook. I mean, it would just open the floor so much because you have him and you can't double-team and leave him open. Otherwise, he's going to make you pay. He's putting this up on just crazy efficiency as like the number one guy, essentially. He's the leading scorer for the Detroit Pistons. Imagine what he could do with the Lakers with LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and Russell Westbrook. Imagine how many looks and just solid quality looks that he's going to get. I mean, he might be even more efficient and more productive, which would just be amazing. And he's a guy that could give you 20 and he doesn't need 20 shots to do so. So that would be great as well because you have LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and Russell Westbrook. So I do think Boyan would just be such a great compliment, such a great fit. A lot of people have concerns about his defense, but his defense isn't as bad as people think. He is an average defender, uh, but he has been solid, right? Like he, you got to remember at one point you had Joe Ingles and Boyan Bogdanovich as the, the primary wings for the Utah Jazz, and they were great defensively. And it's because they had a guy like Rudy Gobert, who a uh, Boyan was able to just funnel the offensive player into uh, Rudy Gobert as the help defender. Well, we have Anthony Davis, so you could do the same thing and just stay in front of the guy, just funnel him, use your length and your size, and keep him uh, in the direction of Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis is a great help defender, and then he can come and kind of clean up the mess, right? That's the idea. But it just opens the floor so much. Uh, obviously, if the Lakers did do a move like this, Hopefully they do others. Hopefully they get other pieces because the Lakers could definitely use two or three solid pieces. But if you're going to do a deal, right? Like let's say you're going to give up, uh, you know, Walker and a first, right? Because that's kind of the only, you're not giving up Max Christie. Walker, you're probably not going to be able to retain. So you, you need to get something else. Like I just feel like that's so much for just Boyan Bogdanovich. And it's very likely that they're not going to want to give up Sadiq Bey for that. They're probably going to want more. Uh, also, if they get trade Boyan and they trade Bay. You know, some questions about, you know, the, the the wing depth that they have. Although they have a ton of salary space, they have draft picks, they have everything they need. So they could solve that issue rather quickly. I don't think it's a big deal. And Detroit, they're not trying to win this season, so I'm sure that they're not worried about it. But another alternative outside of Sadiq Bay, who I would love to get if they could, would be Alec Burke. And Alec Burke would be absolutely solid. Another veteran player that could really kind of just help and contribute. Uh, again, he's having a great season. Uh, another just dead-eye shooter that could come in and really just play a, a solid role for the Lakers, right? And that's what we need. We need guys like Alec Burke. We need guys like Boyan Bogdanovich. These veteran savvy guys. And I know, I know a lot of people want us to stay young, right? But Alec Burke is only 31, so it's not like he's 40, right? So he is still young enough to where it matters, uh, where it, he can actually be a factor and be a, a real contributor uh, to this to this Laker team. Um, but beyond that, he's shooting almost just under 44% from three this season. So you get basically two 40 plus percent three point shooters uh, in a deal. I think that that's much, much better. Like if you can get Alec Burke and you could get Boyan Bogdanovich, which makes a lot of sense for Detroit, right? They don't really need Alec Burke. They're fine at the at the shooting guard position and the guard position period. Uh, you know, you go, especially if you were to give up like a Lonnie Walker, right? Then you basically have a younger replacement. Uh, but you, you unload the two vets to the Lakers. The Lakers get what they want. And then the Detroit Pistons get what they want, right? And maybe you even throw in like a second or something like that. Like the Lakers have uh, their 2023 second and they have Chicago second. So if you're the Lakers, basically the way you get there is just simple. Patrick Beverly, Kendrick Nunn, 
Lonnie Walker. Those three are more than enough to go because the 125% rule are more than enough to get Boyan Bogdanovich and Alec Burke. And if you could get both of those guys in a trade, I think that that is huge for the Lakers because you get a uh, three and D Alec Burke veteran guy who has experience, who's shooting the lights out this season, who's only going to get better looks playing with Russell Westbrook, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis. You then get to go and get a guy in Boyan Bogdanovich, who again is shooting the lights out. Like you could have both of those guys start. Like you could start Dennis Schroeder, Alec Burke, Boyan Bogdanovich, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis. That is a very good starting five. Very good. Like contending good. And I think the Lakers would be just fantastic. Obviously, health and everything is a huge factor. But if everyone's healthy, good luck beating that team. Because now you have Dennis the Menace, who he's shooting great this season. He's looking like Germany, Dennis Schroeder again. So you got him who can shoot. You got LeBron who can shoot. You got Anthony Davis who can shoot. You got Boyan who just shoots the lights out. And you got Alec Burke who's shooting the lights out this year. And not just that, but the Lakers really do need to find a trade that gets them multiple players because, yes, they have 30, 32 million in cap space next season. The problem is, is that like you sign one guy and that's it, right? Like you go and get, say, Gary Trent or a Miles Turner. There's not a bunch of free agents next season that are really valuable. But like, let's say you sign Gary Trent, right? Okay, you sign Gary Trent. Well, there's all your money, right? Like maybe you have like 10 million left over if you're lucky. So maybe you could get two players. Or you could go do a deal like this, get two guys that you can keep around for the long term. You still have Russ's bird, right? So you could keep Russell Westbrook if you wanted to, if it does work. Like, let's say you do go and you win the championship with this team. Well, then perfect, right? Resign Russell Westbrook. You still have your mid-level. You still have your, ta- your biannual, right? So you still have options and you still have vet minimums. Right. And then maybe you could work out ways to kind of keep some of these guys. Like, it's just, I just think that that's the better approach for the Lakers. Cause the problem is the Lakers just keep kind of going through this revolving door of players. And at some point, you need to add some stability. At some point, you need to get guys that make sense. So if you can go get a Boyan Bogdanovich and an Alec Burke that you're going to have for the next, you know, several seasons, even if you don't win this year, you're going into the a full offseason. And you're going into a full training camp with all these guys to build that chemistry, to build that camaraderie. Not just that, but it's easier to fill in role guys that are just going to come in and play the same roles they're already playing than it is to integrate like a Bradley Beal who's a star, who's always been the number one guy, who now has to play third fiddle, right? Like Boyan played with Utah where he was, you know, the third or fourth option. He knows what his role is. He understands his role. He's great at his role. Alec Burke, same thing. He's always been a role player. He knows what his role is. He understands his role. Play defense, knock down the three ball. Cool. Got it. Great. Let's do this, right? And both of these guys would be happy to come to the Lakers, play with LeBron James, Anthony Davis, Russell Westbrook. And now, not just that, but all of your guys get to fall back into bench roles. Now it isn't just Russ and a bunch of like random pieces here and there every other every other game, right? Now it's Russ and Austin Reeves and, you know, Troy Brown and, you know, you have Thomas Bryant and Winning Gabriel and Max Christie and all the guys that have been starting now all get to fall back into a bench role. So now your bench is more productive. Your starting five is more productive. Everything is just better and more productive. And now you're off to the races and now you're contending and competing for championships that's the idea so if you could do this if you could get Boyan and Alec Burke for say a first round pick two seconds even I'd even give up two seconds whatever it takes right because these are going to be longevity guys you could still do the uh the Cam Reddish deal if you wanted to right like so go get Cam Reddish and now you got a shooting guard a small forward and a power forward because both Boyan and Cam Reddish can play either forward spots so you got two guys that can play either forward spots one older and helps win that more now and then one that uh is young that you can kind of uh build and develop right but like that all that takes is like you know Damian Jones and JTA and then there you go there's your money for for Cam Reddish, like you don't have to do Kendrick Nunn or something like that. So they could still go do that deal, give up two first or sorry, two seconds for a Cam Reddish. And then boom, now you got three guys, right? Or if you want to, uh, cause you still have one first, you could even do the Russ deal, 
right? If like if you got this, and then say you know the Hornets are like, okay, well, we'll, we'll we're willing to trade a couple pieces, or you know another team comes out of the Warworks, okay, cool, you can trade those pieces. The, the, you could do this deal, especially if you're only giving up one first. Do this deal. And then go and do another deal if you want to. Or you keep Russ because now these two guys are going to make things so much more easy for Russ, right? Because now Russ has a driving lane because the the defending team has to stand out and actually defend Alec Burke or Boyan Bogdanovich or both, right? And because Russ has been such a great playmaker and such a willing passer, there now that's a threat. So now Russ has more free range to get to the rim. You got LeBron, who's going to have more free range to get to the rim. Anthony Davis, we, he's a willing passer. He can kick it out if you need to. So now you can't really double Anthony Davis as much. It's just you can run so many better sets, so many other things. You still have Austin Reeves who's shooting, you know, just under 40%. You know, and he and he's been solid and great for you. Again, Dennis Schroeder's knocking down the three ball. It just now you got, you know, three, four, five guys that can all shoot the ball now rather than just like one or two. So I just think that if you can figure out a way to to get these two in a Lakers uniform as opposed to, you know, another deal. I like I I really like this deal. I think this is solid. You're basically unloading, you know, your guys, uh, you know, they the the Detroit Pistons, they can either keep Lonnie Walker or let him go however they feel. They got so much salary space and moving off a of Boyan's contract, that just frees up more. So now instead of like 50 million in salary, now you got like 70 million in salary. So you could give Lonnie Walker like 15 million a year, which I don't even know if he'll demand that much. But like, let's say it is like, let's say you're like, OK, we'll give him 15 million a year. That's still cheaper than Boyan. Right. And he could be a guy that could start, that could come off the bench, whatever. Or if you want to later on down the road, you could trade him, whatever. It just gives you flexibility and gives you a young talent with promise and upside, which they want. You get your first round pick unprotected because now it makes more sense and more logical for the Lakers to do that deal uh, because you're getting not only Boyan, but you're getting Alec Burke in the deal. Yes, you're losing Patrick Beverly, who, in my opinion, is not really a, a huge loss. Like, yeah, he's a locker room guy. Yeah, I like his competitiveness. I like just his attitude and stuff. But still, we're not talented enough to just have a, you know, a $13 million Jared Dudley. Like, we just don't, right? And then Kendrick Nunn, yes, he's played better as of late, but we've gotten enough of a sample size to see, like, okay, he's not, he's not it. And you're trading, you know, two six one guys for two sizable guys, right? Like, and that's the big thing that the Lakers need. The Lakers need size desperately. So if you can flip, you know, two guards, three guards and uh, a six, six shooting guard and Alec Burke, who can, who can also play the small forward, right? Like Alec Burke is bigger than all three of the guys you'd be giving up. So you get a six, six shooting guard, small forward, who has good length, and then you get, you know, Boyan Bogdanovich, who's 6'8", right? So now you get size, which will help with rebounding, which will help with everything, right? I just, I think if you can pull this deal off, I think if you're the Lakers, you do this deal. But anyway, those are my thoughts and opinions. And as always, I pass a question on to you. I'd love to hear yours. Let me know down in the comments below. What would you do? Would you love this deal? Would you hate this deal? Is this something you would do ASAP? Uh, whatever your thoughts are, let me know down in the comments below.